Sheriff Scott Israel would never blame his own repeated failures for the shooting at Stoneman Douglas High School. Instead, he needed to blame an organization that was not involved, the NRA. During CNN's 1984-esque town hall meeting last week, Israel played the demagogue against NRA spokeswoman Dana Lash. Watch. You just told this group of people that you are standing up for them. You're not standing up for them until you say, I want less weapons. Dana Lash joins us tonight. Dana, when I was, I was watching that, my first thought was, he doesn't sound much like a sheriff. He sounds like someone running for office, a Tammany politician, a red-faced blowhard, a demagogue. It doesn't sound like something a law enforcement official would say in a town hall. What do you make of that? I completely agree with you, Tucker, and I'm so glad that you're talking about this because this is ultimately, this is the failure, and this is where the failure took place. It was with this man and his leadership as Broward County Sheriff. And I'll have everybody know, Tucker, as well, before the sheriff took that stage, uh, him and I sitting up there for this town hall, he was allowed to go out and give a rally-style speech in which he railed against special interest and was naming the NRA and really setting the stage up to go after five million law-abiding innocent Americans who didn't get all of the 45, I think is what BuzzFeed reported, tips that his office received. Uh, they didn't have the murderer calling his office himself, telling him that he thought he was a threat and that police needed to do something. Family members weren't calling the NRA reporting this. They were calling his office. And so he has a lot of explaining to do. And one more quick thing, Tucker. I asked the sheriff on stage whether or not he could have actually arrested this murderer based on a Florida state statute that, that treated anyone sending electronic or written threats of bodily injury, harm, or death to other individuals as this murderer did with his classmates, whether he could have arrested that individual charged with a felony. And the sheriff did indicate that he could, but then he glossed right by it and wanted to refocus and shift responsibility away from his dereliction of duty. I think he owes a lot of innocent Americans an apology. Well, but it's, all, it's also really troubling because, I mean, this is, guy's not a congressman from Camden. He has the power to put people in jail, to take their lives away from them. He's a law enforcement official. And this behavior seems reckless and dishonest and weird comparing yourself to, J, you know, to MLK and Gandhi. I mean, d does it seem like right. there's something wrong with him? And, you know, you mentioned that that Game of Thrones quote, the lion doesn't worry about the opinions of the sheep. Well, he mentioned that again yesterday in a radio interview with a, with a South Florida station. And he was attacking all of those, including the congressman that you just had on, the lawmaker that you just had on, uh, the state of Florida, who uh, was calling for his resignation. And, you know, I, I agree with you. I, I don't, I wish that this would have come out on the stage. I wish that this truth would have been known at that particular time. It seemed as that he was more interested in turning this into a campaign campaign stop. And I will say that this really explains why the Coral Springs police chief came out against the Broward County Sheriff the way that they did. They said in right. a statement that the truth is going to come out because Coral Springs police reacted. They were the first ones in and they seem to be really calling the Broward Sheriff out on what I can only assume to be showboating was what they were suggesting in their letter. And there had to be a lot of drama behind the scenes for other law enforcement officers who really, I mean, these are the guys who, uh, I mean, they, they sacrificed they ran in, they heard the sound of gunfire of and screaming Tucker, and they ran in and they did what they could to save innocence. That's why we love our law enforcement because of what they do for us. And now it's no wonder that they came out against this, this Broward County Sheriff. It's also transparent though. I mean, th I'm not blaming the shooting, the shooting on the sheriff. He didn't commit the shooting, but a series of missteps no, by his agency not. allowed it to happen. He's culpable in some way, and yet he's diverting all the attention to others it's the most basic and recognizable kind of butt covering. Why does the press not point that out? I wish they would. I mean, what we're talking about is systemic failure here. And Tucker, yeah. I mean, here you had the 45 reports into this sheriff's office. You also had two FBI reports. But even bigger than that, we've had decades of the political class ignoring the mental health crisis here in the United States and politicians who have refused to report dangerous people who are been adjudicated unfit, dangerous to themselves or others to the yeah. NICS system. And so this is why we, the NRA, have been pushing for targeted action and offering solutions on this. And we're going to continue to do so. Yeah. So if you run a city with tens of thousands of mentally ill people living on the sidewalk and you're lecturing us about guns, you know, maybe it's time to wake up uh, a little bit. Thank you, Dana. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tucker. Well, in the days.